Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Marissa and I am the owner of Woods Tiny Farm. So today I'm gonna to be planting some seeds out in the greenhouse and I've kind of been putting this off because my greenhouse is a disaster and I thought, you know what? I want to enjoy putting videos out on YouTube. So I'm just gonna show you kind of behind the scenes of what my greenhouse looks like and how much of a disaster it is. So uh, yeah, anyways, I think my goal of this channel is to just be raw and real and share the truth. So come with me to the greenhouse. It's actually pretty warm out here despite the snow. So the greenhouse should be toasty. the girls and the poop I need to pick up out here. Okay, here is the mess. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's scary. It's scary in here. had to run out to the car and grab my sunglasses because it's super bright out here and I don't want to be squinting the whole time. So right now I'm just going to clean up what I can in the background so that it looks decent to film and we'll come back after that. Now she's got her butt right here. Rosie, what are you doing? All right, I've got my table out and all my supplies. Um, I think with one of my varieties, I'm going to be using a 10 by 20 tray and then with the others, I might just be using these small containers. Um, I have one variety, it's called Patterson and those are really good storing onions. So I think I'm going to plant a lot of those and then I'll kind of decide as I go on the other varieties. So here's my little storage container. I also have some seeds I threw in here. I have a uh, pelleted red wing onions and pelleted Patterson onions, which I'm going to be planting a lot of these Pattersons. So I also have some Pattersons that are not pelleted, but I've heard that these ones that are um, will go bad sooner, so I'm actually going to plant these first. So I'm just going to be using street germination mix for right now. Once everything germinates, I will probably start fertilizing because this germination mix doesn't really have any nutrients in it. So you'll want to add some sort of fertilizer, especially with onions, because they're going to be in this for quite a while before we plant them outside. So I am in zone 5B and I feel like we don't have much of a spring. It usually goes from winter to heat fairly quick. Um, so it makes it hard on a lot of the things that you want to plant like brassicas and lettuce, stuff like that. A lot of stuff just bolts really fast. Um, but I think onions, super good to get them going kind of early in the year. It's February right now. so. I think this is the perfect time to get onions started. Okay, so I'm not going to get super fancy with this. A lot of people will um, kind of like dig little trenches and then put all their seeds in there. I am just going to spread these on, if I can get them open. I'm just going to spread these on and then put another little layer of dirt over top. It's hard to see because of the because of the uh, is it perlite or yeah it's perlite. The perlite in there makes it kind of hard to see. And I'm not counting how many I'm doing 
but these onions store really well. Um, before I purchased them, I did a lot of research and people said that the Pattersons are one of the best yellow storing onions, so they should last us all winter. You know what? I'm just going to use the rest. I don't even know how many were in here. It doesn't say. These are actually from 2022 and I think they say to use them within a year because um, their germination rate starts to go down. So I'm just going to use them all and then I'm going to replenish my stock. I'll have to buy some more from Johnny's. So there we are. It's kind of hard to see them because they mix in with the perlite. They're a white pelleted seed. Okay, so now I am just going to sprinkle another layer over top. Those big chunks out. Big chunks like that I try to get out, otherwise it kind of will disrupt the seeds from pushing up sometimes. And simple as that. I am just going to overhead water these to get them nice and wet and then I will take them inside, put them on my grow rack and I might put a germination mat underneath it to keep it warm um, until I start to see them popping up and I'll have the humidity dome on there. So yeah, it's super simple. Okay, so now let me see what other seeds I have. So oh, I have never planted shallots, but I'm going to try this here. So this will be one of my new varieties that I go for. And I'm going to plant some leeks. And then I do have some red onions I'm going to plant. And I think it was these, the red wings. These ones are really good for storing. Um, I also have red carpet, but I don't think these ones were as good for storing. So that when I grow these red carpet, I will eat these first and then the red wing I will kind of keep for over the winter. And we're actually still eating on our onions from last year and it is February 13th I think today. So they store really well. Okay, and I'm going to be planting Hashiko bunching onions. These actually overwintered here, which I'm surprised. Um, they came up the, the next year after I had planted them and I was able to collect more seeds. So I really like this variety. It's just a really big, hearty bunching onion. Okay, I've also got these ruby red onions and these ones do not store very well. Um, I might plant a bunch of these. So the date on this packet is 2021. And again, the germination rate just kind of starts to drop after a couple years. So I would like to actually kind of get rid of some of these just so I can replenish my stock. And I've got Walla Walla Sweet Onions. We love these, but again, these are not the greatest for storing. Um, I wish I had a freeze dryer because then it would make food preservation a whole lot easier. I don't, um, but what I'm thinking I could maybe do with these is chop them up, just dice them and freeze them. That's kind of an option. Um, I would like to do a lot of canning this year. So I want to can like just meals in a jar and do like stew meat and onions and potatoes. So that might be a way to use up a lot of these onions that don't store very well. So I'm going to start with the Walla Walla onions. And I'll probably use the rest of this packet oh, 
There's nothing in this packet. Okay, I don't know why I put that back, but I know I have more. Yeah, guys, I am kind of a seed hoarder, so I have all of these packets. This one's garbage. Um, let's see, I've got this one here that was from 2021, so I'm gonna make sure I plant this one first, and the other two are from 2022. Um, there are 100 seeds in here, so I actually think I'm just gonna do one of these because any more than that is a little overkill. The thing I love about onions is that you can plant them so densely, you don't have to plant them in their individual cells. Um, and then when you go to plant them out, you just pull them apart and they come apart real nice and you plant them in the ground. So super easy, you don't have to have a million trays. I might do half and half in each one of these. So probably around 50 in each. I'm just gonna do the same thing I did with the Pattersons. Just sprinkle it in there. Getting it everywhere. And because these seeds are a couple years old, we might have a little bit of a lower germination rate. Um, so, you know, if you plant 100 seeds, you might get, maybe I'll get like 75. And then also you can kind of account for, you know, if any of them don't make it when you plant them out, stuff like that. So I like to kind of overplant sometimes. Okay, now I'm just gonna top with another layer of dirt and they'll be ready to be watered. some of these chunks broken up a little bit so that the seeds can pop through. Okay, now I need to label. I'm really bad at that and then I end up forgetting what variety is which. wallet on there. I need another tag. All these small containers I'm just going to put here in a 1020 tray that does not have holes so that when I water um, it doesn't drip all over in my grow room. And I would like to come up with a new tagging system these tags, when they go out in the garden, they fade really easily. So if you guys have any tips for how you label your plants, I'd love to hear it. Okay, so ruby red onions we'll do next. Do the rest of that seed packet. Okay, we're gonna try these shallots. I'm super excited about these. So there's apparently 100 seeds in here. I'm not gonna plant all of them. 
I don't have very great dexterity with these gloves, <laughs> as you can see. Okay. How shall it store? I actually haven't done any research regarding that, so I'm just gonna do. Mm, that's maybe a third of the packet, half the packet, so maybe 30 to 50 seeds ish. Okay, what's next? Already did Patterson's. So Red Wings were the ones that stored well and let's see, I think I've got oh no Patterson. Actually guys, I totally messed up. <laughs> so this container here that I planted that I thought was Patterson actually were the Red Wings. So I'm not gonna plant any more Red Wings because that was a ton. Oops. Read your labels, okay. So it was this container <laughs> that were the Pattersons. So I'm gonna go back and do another large tray of these Pattersons. Okay, so that was actually like super funny because <laughs> I didn't want to plant that many of those red wings, but you know what? Now I'm thinking I can maybe uh, do some pickled onions. I love pickled red onions. They are so good. So maybe I can find some, some ways to preserve those because that was a lot. We love to eat them fresh, and so I usually don't use them in like canning recipes, but yeah, maybe I'll... I'll have to do some research on that. So anyways, these ones are the Pattersons, and I'm going to seed heavy here. So every year I feel like I plant onions, and it feels like I plant a ton of them, and then my husband's like, that's all you planted? So I'm going all out this year. Let's just, let's just dump them all in there. Okay, I've got a few left in here. I probably won't do the whole container. This is a germination mix that I had bought for my microgreens, but now that I am not growing in dirt anymore, I have a ton of it, and I'm definitely not going to use it all, so I was thinking I might try to sell it this spring. There's plenty of people that want to buy a germination mix, and when I was buying it from a nursery nearby, I was paying $65 for a bale of it, so I don't know what I'm going to charge. Maybe not that much. <laughs> okay, there we go. And now I have to label this because I was originally going to only have one large tray. Okay, where did my pen go? What the heck? Oh, it's over here. Okay, so these are Patterson's. There. Okay, what is up next? We have 
the bunching onions. I'm not gonna plant a ton of these. Actually, I'm gonna get a smaller container. And again, this is where it would be nice to have a um, a freeze dryer so that like if I have extra things like this, I can just literally freeze dry it. But you know what? It's just not really in the budget right now. <laughs> if you wanna sponsor me Harvest Right, that would be so awesome. <laughs> I don't have enough followers yet. I gotta get my follower count up. Okay, so this container has 100 seeds. Yeah, I'm not gonna count, but I'm just gonna do a few. That should be enough. These produce a ton of green onions for each plant, so. I might also give some away to my mom. She's got a small little garden that she does. So if I plant extra, I could just share the love. Ooh, that's a lot. Okay. Okay, I think that is all the onions I'm going to plant. Um, and now I'm just gonna plant some leeks and I'm gonna show you guys how I do that. Okay, so I got this tip from someone who was really good at growing things. He said if you start with a um, deeper container like this and then you just add a few inches of soil on the bottom, you can then put your leek seeds in and cover with soil. Uh, once they start to sprout up and they're a couple inches tall, then you can just continue to add dirt in and that will actually make your leek have a more edible part to it. So like your bottom white part will be a lot longer and it'll just continue to grow and you'll just continue to add until you get to the top. And then when you go to plant those in the ground, you're gonna be planting them probably, you know, this deep in the ground just to keep that white part in the ground. There are a ton of seeds in here. I don't know how many it says. It doesn't say how many seeds are in here. But I'm probably gonna plant about that many. So again, I'm just going to sprinkle in there. And there we go. We have a lot of room in there to add more dirt. So that's kind of exciting. Okay, I brought a few more seeds out that I wanted to get going early. Let me see here. Oh my, some of my brassicas, um, some herbs that are, that take quite a while to germinate and get going. So what do we got here? Okay, I would like to try this green globe artichoke. So I think I seed started some of these last year and honestly, I don't even know <laughs> what happened to them. Um, I need to find out if these are deer resistant. If they are, I would love to maybe plant a couple of these in my front flower bed area instead of in the garden, but I don't know, that's kind of up for debate. So I'm gonna plant at least Probably a few of those. Okay, so I've got some herbs here. I'm gonna start early. I have cilantro, just because our springs are so short and my cilantro bolts so quick. I would love to get some of this going before it gets hot. Um, thyme, I love thyme. 
and Greek oregano, one of my favorites to use in like my pasta salad dressings, so good. Okay, and I've got some kale here, lacinato kale, dwarf blue curled scotch kale, and two different kinds of chard. So I've got five color silver beet and board hook giant Swiss chard. And then cabbage, I've just got a red cabbage, early Jersey Wakefield cabbage, and Miss Hong cabbage, which does not have a picture, unfortunately. It's a very pretty cabbage. And then I'm just gonna get a couple lettuces going. So this is called Winter Density, and this one is, I don't know how to say it correctly, Rouge de Hiver Romaine. Um, I grew this last year and it's like a, a pretty purpley color. Okay, so I'm going to be planting these varieties in these containers. And guys, I have saved my nursery containers for years. I literally have hundreds of just like these six cell trays and the four cell trays. So I'm ready to go. Some of these might need to be thrown away this year, but I'd rather reuse these then buy new ones so try to make sure these are packed down just because that dirt will settle over time so you want to make sure you have a good amount of dirt in there and since i didn't pre-moisten my dirt it, it's kind of a little fluffy Okay, so I'm gonna start with the Green Globe Artichoke, and I'm just gonna plant this whole tray. So I'll do six of them. And then look at the depth here. Let's see. Quarter inch deep. Okie dokie artichokey. Okay, now let's see. How about we start with our kale? I'm gonna do this lacinato kale. I think that's how you say it. Not quite sure. So these seeds are from 2019, so they're fairly old. I think I am just going to plant a couple per cell just because I think I'm going to have some problems with germination. So, and this kale really produces a lot. So, you know, if you're not preserving your kale in any way and you're just eating it fresh, you definitely don't need a ton of plants because they just, they're like a cut and come again crop. I love that. Okay, now our dwarf blue curled scotch. This also produces a ton of kale per plant. Okay, if all those sprout, that will be a ton of kale. But I'm sure some of them won't come up and I might lose a couple. We'll see. I have a really hard time with those um, cabbage worms in the spring. And this year I'd like to find out what I can use on that's not a chemical, but is effective. If anyone has any suggestions, let me know in the comments.
Okay, now our five color silver beet Swiss chard. This stuff is so pretty. This seed packet is also from 2019, so I probably need to get rid of it. Do a few per cell here. And this is one that you can kind of split up after they start germinating pretty easily. They just pull apart easily. Still have more. Maybe I will do a fall crop with those just to get rid of them and then I can buy more. Okay, now we're gonna do our Ford Hook Giant Chard. I grew this last year and it was really giant. So, Miss Hong cabbage. I would love to make kimchi with this. I've never made kimchi, so that's kind of on my bucket list. Okay, early Jersey Wakefield. This is another old seed packet. So germination could be bad. You know, I'm just gonna do this. Just gonna see how many pop up here. And red calabos cabbage. This stuff's really good. Okay, a few more things. Let's see. I'm gonna do these in containers that are not celled containers like this. Okay, we will start with good old cilantro. On to Greek oregano. These seeds are super tiny, so they'll come in this tiny little packet inside the big packet. They are just so microscopic. I mean, look at that. I don't even know if that'll focus that close. They're tiny.
So this oregano is a perennial in my zone and I planted it before and honestly at the end of the season I've just ripped it out but I'd like to put it in a place where where it can come back every year and it's not like in a in a garden bed where I'm ripping everything out because then it just gets in the way. Okay last herb right now is thyme. These are very small as well. They come in this tiny little packet. Oh, that was close. It's actually going to do this. There, I don't want a ton of those. I don't eat a lot of thyme. Sometimes we cook with it, but it's not a super big ingredient in our home. Okay. Okay, now we just have lettuce to go here. Let's see, how am I gonna do my lettuce? This is something that I'll be planting over the summer, just new crop. Every couple weeks I'll be planting more lettuce, so I'm not gonna plant like all my lettuce right now. Okay, so our Rouge Diver <laughs> Romaine. I'm probably saying that incorrectly. Actually, I'm gonna take my gloves off because it'll just be easier to deal with these seeds. a couple per cell. Again, it used to be really calculated about how I did all this stuff and now that I've done it for a few years I just kind of throw it in there. Okay, I need to label that before I forget. We'll just call it Rouge Let. And this is the winter density lettuce. Ooh. I don't want that much. A lighter seed. Here's the finished product. I've got two of these 1020 trays filled with my storage onions. So I've got Patterson and Red Wing and everything else you just saw me plant. So I am going to take these inside and probably spray them in there. Um, it's getting super windy out here. That's hard to see, but some of the bushes up there blowing around and I really do not want to lose all my seed to the wind. So I think I'm going to take them in and spray them with my microgreen sprayer. We made it to the grow room without all my dirt blowing away. So now I just need to give these guys a thorough watering and then I will put the humidity domes on. Okay, so since these trays had holes in the bottom, I just put a solid bottom tray there so my water doesn't leak out. Normally I would do this outside with my sprayer on the misting setting, but since it's so windy out, I couldn't do that today. So we're gonna make sure these guys get a good water. Let me try to get 
try to do it so it's a mist, more of a fine mist. I love the sprayer. I'll link it below if you guys are interested, but it's so good for microgreens and seed starting. So you don't have to use a tiny little hand sprayer. I don't have any short humidity domes, so I just have these large ones. They fit okay, but they're kind of a pain in the butt. There you have it. I will be coming back in here every day to miss these guys and we should be seeing some seedlings popping up in just a few days. Thanks guys for sticking around this long. If you want to see these plants planted in the garden, give me a follow, give me a like. It really supports my channel and I will see you guys on the next one.